Now, I'm not a drifter at all. Well, Carl, normally I am a man of too many words, <laughs> but right now you have me speechless. That's a good thing. I like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, so I look at it and I'm like, okay, I, I'm not sure exactly what it is, and that's that's it. What, what is it? It's. I mean, it's basically just your old regular BMW. There's not too much <laughs> different to it. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was a. BMW 325, 1995, and okay. it's it's got a few work that has snowballed. You didn't buy it like this. I did not buy it like this. It was just a four-seater, old beat-up BMW that I actually saved from a scrapyard. Uh, I know this very well. Uh, the LS. So we got we got what? The LS world. Starting from the front, we've got a twin turbo LS. Uh, yeah, I see the Fortune Autos, which I absolutely love. love. This once dignified German sedan, a 1995 BMW 325 cut down to its most basic elements with a massively turbocharged LS motor, a T56 Magnum transmission, and the differential out of a BMW M5. And it runs on corn juice, that's E85. It's a full-scale go-kart and it's 100% street legal. Frame. It's full NHRA certified. It is safe as you can get. Everything about this car is certified to go quicker than eight seconds legally. Wow. And then speaking of legally, you also have had the police take a look yes. at the car? Yes. Actually, when it was first done, I purposely drove to the Ohio State Patrol office and they're like, can we help you? I was like, actually, I want you to inspect my car. They're like, really? I was like, yeah, please inspect <laughs> yeah. it. They went around it and they said, you're 100% legal except for a loud exhaust. Like I even have license plate lights on the car, everything. I use the turn signals, turn even signals, though it's a BMW. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Most people don't know that stock BMWs do have turn signals. They do actually. Yeah. <laughs> and so you, you said burnout contests, but that makes me wonder, what is the point of this car? The point of this car is to have fun. That is what it started out with, is to just have fun with your friends. Then it kind of evolved from a street car to a drag car. We're like, oh yeah, we'll have a nice, really fast drag car. Then I'm like, well, it's got lots of power. We can do all kinds of burnouts with it. And with burnouts comes drifting. So we started going to some sanctioned drift events and even pros have told us like, you know what, this is actually decent if you can get an angle kit adapted to this car. And I was like, of course I can. I have a Sawzall and a welder. We'll make it work. <laughs> and a weekend free. And a weekend free. And yeah. two days ago, we finished it up. The only testing we did was driving it onto the trailer. Carl takes me on an orientation run through downtown Detroit, and it is no surprise that everywhere we go, the cart is in effect. After giving the lunchtime crowd a bit of midday theater, we head off to Flat Rock Speedway so I can test it out for myself. Simple enough, there we go. <laughs> it is surprisingly tame. You know, it's actually not as loud as I was expecting it to be. It's still got this weird, like, I can hear both sides, but they're two different exhausts from two different sides of the motor. Something totally new for me. I love it. I, I think that he's built a very fun vehicle. So he said it can handle Let's see. Let's see. If <laughs> and it can. I'm not a drifter at all. I, I respect what drifters can do, 
I'm not going to try showing you that I can drift a, a car that is capable of drifting. That's not, that's not <laughs> going to work. Yeah, but there comes a time when you just have to go for it. The death cart was begging me to do it anyway. You know, it was fine. I just was like, I'm stopping. So it, it was still in gear and everything like that. So I don't, I don't know what that was, but. Is bust. Oh, here, look, there's parts of it. Yeah. So this is the bottom parts of the brace. There's five of these bolts that go in. And with all that grip and clutch yeah. kicking it, those tires are trying their hardest not yeah. to spin. So when you clutch kicked it, so much torque, the diff said, I'm gonna head out. So there's. That's the one spare part I didn't bring today is the diff. I'm like, that. But. You said it's still moving, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just... And the diff's working and it's already broke, so can we break it more? <laughs> I defer to you. <laughs> well, so you would fit right in with our team. We have a motto saying, no half cents. Okay. If you're going to do something, I... go out and do it. <laughs> so now what? I got 12 tires in the trailer, a jack, a gun, and it still moves. You should probably just finish off what you started. <laughs> You know, the coolest part about doing something like this is that the guys behind me, you don't hear a single one of them upset. We're all having a blast. And that's that's truly the spirit of why we're doing what we do. Not, me, not just me breaking parts, but the whole concept of pushing a car beyond stock form, building it, tuning it, adjusting it. The, the natural life cycle of that is and does include breaking it and then being able to build it even better. And that's the passion that all the guys behind me shares. You get this camaraderie, this passion, and that's why I love being part of this. And that's why I love unearthing that and showing that on this series. It's the, the spirit of, I think, just American ingenuity, being able to try and do different things. And so I hope for the next episode, I don't break another car. That's not my intention. I want to show off what these guys can do, but uh, well, who knows? <laughs>